Hello and welcome back to the StarCraft Weekly News. I am Artosis as always. And the first thing I'd like to go over this week is a little correction to the news that I gave out on DreamHack. Actually, there's going to be four people that join the top of the tournament. So basically, there's going to be two qualifiers and each of them are going to give us two players that are just going to be advanced to the final eight of DreamHack. So there's still going to be an open tournament there. So that should be really highly competitive. And the first DreamHack qualifier just finished up. Idra won the whole thing without losing a single game. And in second place, we had A2 from Russia, still showing that he is an absolute beast. Brad OK was up there, and a lot of other big names really high up. But uh, Idra has already announced he is not actually going to attend DreamHack. It's too close, too much money to really fly over there and everything. Too busy with his pro gamer duties or whatever. And so I guess that that, that spot's going to have to be redoled out, whether it's another tournament or just given to the winner of third place. I do not know. But uh, again, DreamHack is going to be an open tournament, so thank you for uh, Raceland letting me know on that. And, well, iCup has restarted its new season, and that is one of the most exciting times uh, every three months because you can play so many pro gamers. Just get on there and start playing. It doesn't matter if you're in the D channel. Every pro gamer has to start at D as well. So that's where you can get a lot of games in the first few days, the first couple weeks, playing against people that you would never, ever get to play otherwise because you know you're not going to get to A+, and ask pro gamers for games. It's not going to happen. So this is the time. Everyone get on IC Cup. Start playing a lot of games. And, you know, a lot of people have already been playing a lot of games. I looked through the rankings, and the top-ranked foreigner as of uh, this news show was Shawnee uh, from Sweden. He was in 14th with a C rank so far. And, you know, Shawnee is a name that is coming up. You know, I haven't paid too much attention to this guy, but in stamina, he actually got into the top eight, which really surprised a lot of people. You know, it was, it was like these seven huge names that everyone has known forever, and this guy named Shawnee. So he's just, he's this Protoss player from Sweden, number one on iCup for Foreigners right now, a good record up there as well. So that is pretty impressive, actually. And I guess this guy is someone that we have to look out for. Um, I, he's joining the top of the scene. Uh, and the next, the next highest ranked foreigner was actually chosen from USA. Uh, not uncommon to see him up there. He was in 23rd with also a C rank. So uh, foreigner's doing pretty good right now, staying on that first page still. And, you know, especially my favorite type of foreigners, the, the ones that, you know, are in the English-speaking community, doing well, doing much better than any of the Chinese so far. There's still uh, two or three Chinese in the top 50 as well. And, you know, there may be some Smurfs in there with Korean flags, but, you know, I'm not too sure about that. Anyways, get on IC Cup right away and start playing because you're going to get games against pro gamers. It's going to be fun. Bring your replays over to Romad. Uh, he, he can find out what any pro gamer is. He's really quite astounding at it. And that just, that's really one of the most exciting things to do as a foreigner player right now. Um, there's some news about TOT right now, and that is Shad has left due to inactivity, uh, and also Cloud has left again uh, due to inactivity and personal reasons and whatever. And you know, that's the Cloud joining, unjoining, joining, unjoining TOT all the time is actually really reminding me of G5 and media. I think we're just going to have to assume that Cloud is part of TOT, and whether he's wearing the tag at the time or not. It's, it's really quite hard to tell. And they have a couple new recruits. Uh, Ace from, from Germany, a, a good Mac Zerg that's been coming up, very young player, got a lot of talent in him, and I mean, he's a European Zerg that's good, so of course he's in Taut. That's just how things happen, except to Avi Love for whatever reason. I don't know, Mon Dragon, what's the deal with that? Um, and then Ariador, and I tell you, this is actually kind of exciting. You know, StarCraft II is on the horizon, and suddenly Ariador is coming back to play. What is going on here? Uh, Ariador, for those of you who do not know him, also known as Liquid Drone, uh, a very old school player, the oldest school player that is active, basically. You know, he's been playing StarCraft longer than Boxer. Uh, he has been playing since the very beginning. Uh, and he has actually always been extremely talented. Um, he used to play with all the top pros back in the day, like Slayer, NTT. And, you know, at one point in time, the number one Dire Straits player in the entire world, I kid you not. 
And you know, he has one very special accomplishment, special to me at least. He's actually the person who taught me how to play StarCraft when I was a newbie. So it's really exciting to see him back. An extremely talented RTS player. And if he's back to get ready for StarCraft 2, that is really awesome because you know what? He is just going to really represent Norway very well. Just a smart, nice, good guy. Great to see him back. Weird to see him in a top tag, but okay. Um, let's go over to uh, Valor for a moment here now. And we can see with this picture here from Starfeeder, um, Strelok. Wow, Strelok against Toss Girl. Strelok, you get awfully handsome there. Oh my god, who is that guy? Well, no, that's, that's Noni. Let's put up the real picture here. Uh, nice little mistake there by Lipton over at Starfeeder. And uh, the, that Valor tournament is going to be streamed pretty quickly here. We're into the top 16. The Strelok versus Toss Girl match is going to come up. I've been told it's a pretty exciting match. Uh, as well as quite a few of the other games. I'm not sure if they're planning to do all of them yet, but uh, there is a site over at GOM TV for Valor specifically. So, you know, that's, that's coming up, and it's looking pretty exciting. There's going to be a lot of good matches. Not many Protosses, though. Oh, my God. I, I, I believe that Tidy was the only Protoss in the top uh, 16, so that's actually really quite weird. You know, well, I guess actually LZ Gamer's playing Mondragon, and he plays PvZ, so... There'll be at least a little bit of Protoss action, but I guess the Zergs and Terrans right now kind of dominating that tournament. But uh, make sure you keep an eye out for that. Valor looks like it's going to be pretty exciting to see some uh, really well commentated games up on GOM TV. Uh, that, you know, that's, that's a big step forward for our community. So put your effort behind that, put your attention on it, and let's, let's watch that. It's going to be great. Um, let's see here for other news in the foreigner scene. Uh, another WCG qualifier just happened, and of course it was surrounded by drama. Uh, Nyokin versus Chosen basically in the finals. They both showed up at the pre-designated time in the rules, but apparently the other two players both had wanted to postpone it. And, you know, they just played it out. Nyokin had not agreed to postpone anything. And Nyokin won ended up winning. It was actually extremely close. The overall score was 4-4. Four and four. But Nyokin won two sets, two to one, while Chosen won one set, two to zero. So Nyokin advances, qualifies for the USA Finals for the umpteenth time. This is going to be, if he goes this year, his sixth USA Finals, I believe, that he's played in. So really such a talented player. Chosen, I'm sure that he's going to qualify. There's still four more left. Chosen, definitely one of the best USA players. We haven't seen him at a LAN yet, but no, he doesn't hack. Uh, you know, one of the first times that's ever actually happened where a great player never goes to land but actually doesn't hack. It's like, wait a minute, what is going on here? But Chosen is one of those. Such a great, talented player. I really hope that he does travel up to USA Finals this year. It would be really exciting to see him there. And uh, so there's going to be four more. They're all spread out, a week in between them all. So, you know, by the time you watch this, a couple days later, another one's going to start. And then, you know, two weeks later, another one, two weeks later, another one. So, uh, you know, everyone, go ahead, keep playing that. You know, even though there's a lot of drama behind it and stuff, it just makes it more fun, more exciting for all of us. All right, uh, now on to Zotac Cup. Now, I told you about Zotac-Cup.com last week, and, you know, go sign up for that. It's an important thing for our community, 100-year tournaments every week. And, you know, one thing that is a little bit shady about it is that, they have not paid out the winners yet. Uh, I spoke to Idra this morning. He still has not been paid. He won the second cup. As far as I know, Rhett hasn't either. And, you know, this happens quite often, actually, in eSports. Uh, you know, you win a tournament, you win some money, and it takes forever. I mean, once upon a time, it took GGL, like, 11 months to mail me my prizes or my check. Um, and so, you know, this, this happens a lot. It's unfortunate. But still, go play this. It looks quite reputable to me. They've had cups in other games for quite a while. So they wouldn't keep going if it wasn't real. But, you know, Zotac, come on, pay those guys. It's really not that hard. Um, but anyways, you know, go check out this tournament. Not many people signed up yet. As Last time I looked at it, I think there was under 30 signups so far. And really, we should be getting, you know, over 100 signups for every single cup. I really can't believe that we aren't. Uh, everyone should be covering this more, paying more attention to this. I'm sure it's producing really great, high-quality games. And uh, so that's about it for the foreigner scene in StarCraft this week. Uh, we've got a lot of other stuff in the Korean scene coming up in just a moment here. But first, I want to give you the StarCraft tip. I forgot to give one last week. Sorry about that. Uh, but I have a good tip for you this week. Um, your F keys, F2, F3, F4. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't use these, but you can.